Good morning and welcome to a very special landscape photography video. Why is this so special? Well, I'm going to be shooting my landscapes with Nikon's flagship camera, the Z9. Oh yeah! Right now, you're probably thinking, I've lost the plot, or won the lottery, or someone's given me this camera, or this is a sponsored video. Well, I can say none of that is true. But what I can say is, I did spend my own money to get this camera, but I also didn't spend 5,300 pounds on it. I'll explain all that later on, but I've got to do the first things first, and that's capture some landscape photographs. This morning I've come to Great Staple Tour on Dartmoor and the conditions are, well, as they always are when I get a new camera, challenging. It you know, always seems to be the case. New camera, want to go, make a video, conditions seem to be uh, less than optimal. However, I will make the most of them. As you can see behind me, it's clear blue skies. And what this really means for my photography is when the sun rises in just a few minutes, when the light comes up above the horizon, it will be quite soft and it should add some, hopefully some warm glow to the rock stacks behind me. Then as the morning progresses and that sun gets higher up in the horizon, the scene becomes very contrasty and not so nice to photograph, particularly when there's no clouds in the sky. So I'm probably gonna to have to work with quite a small window, but we'll do our best and we'll capture some photographs. I'm gonna get the camera set up and then I'll talk you through my composition. Right, let's get the camera on the tripod. I have to say this thing is a beast of a camera. Can I make sure that's on nice and tight there? I'll see this already. I'm already using my old trusty Nikon remote. This is the one I used to use for the D850. I love this because it's got timers, all sorts of long exposure stuff in it because this camera's got a port on it. So really happy to be using this thing again. Anyway, I'm gonna set my composition up. The camera handles exactly the same as any other Nikon. If you're familiar with the buttons and the menus, you'd have no problems using this camera. But the composition, things I'm looking for. So the light is about to pop above the horizon. What that's gonna do, it's gonna cast some really nice soft light on this grass, which is turning a lovely green color because it's spring. And I've got this rock here on the left-hand side and that leads out to some of these other rocks which will catch the, the morning light. And then you've got two main stacks of great staple tour, which should hopefully catch light. There's nothing going on in the sky. We'll see how it goes. But when this all catches the light, I think it's gonna make for a really interesting shot. And then I'll move further towards the stacks uh, using various different rock formations and the grasses to uh, vary my composition a little bit. But yeah, I'm really excited. It can't be, can't be too much longer now. Yeah, this could, this could be quite interesting for the next five minutes. Okay, as you can see from my face, the sun is well and truly up above the horizon now. The light is far too harsh now to be doing more photographs, but more than that, I'm gonna rush off to a second location. It's a bit of a gamble, but I think it might be worth it. Keep your fingers crossed and I'll see you in a minute. Welcome back. Now you may be wondering, is this even the same day or anywhere near where you were uh, when I last saw you? Well, I can assure you it is. This is just a lower part of Dartmoor. But what I could see up from the top of Great Staple Tor was that some low cloud fog, basically, had rolled in over the lower parts of the landscape right around a place called Brentor Church. It's quite an iconic Dartmoor location, I, I think you could say. It's an old church, I think 15th or 16th century sat up on top of a tour up in a up in a hill with lower landscapes so it kind of stands out and i thought well if i get down here and i get the conditions just right with the fog levels i might get quite an atmospheric shot so that's why i kind of had to rush down here because i was concerned that the, the fog might clear it's i'm not sure what it's going to do i still can't really see the church but i can see the blue sky above and i can see the sun so it might not be too long before things change and i could get myself quite an atmospheric shot so yeah, that's my plan. I thought hopefully it's gonna be worth rushing down here. And um, yeah, in between or just maybe just after, I'll tell you why I've got this Z9. 
There's not a lot happening on the photography front at the moment, so I might as well take this time to tell you about why I've got a Z night. So this Sunday, I'm shooting a very important concert. I'm not gonna tell you who it is, because even though I have a photo pass organized, sometimes these things don't go right. <laughs> and you don't, sometimes you, 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 you get there and they won't let you take pictures. But so I'm, I'm not gonna say anything more. We'll see how it goes. But for that, I wanted to get an F2.8 lens. I needed that extra stop light because since I do mostly landscapes, all my lenses are F4s. And you know, I have used these for concerts and gigs and they're fine, but I just thought, because it's such an important gig, I'm gonna get myself a 2.8 lens. And the best way for me to do that is to rent one. So I go to Wex Photo, uh, they've got a rental department, and I went onto their website. I've, ordered, I've rented from them before, it's quite a very useful service. I thought, do they have a, a Nikon Z F2.8 24 to 70? Yes, they do, add that to the basket. And then I thought, I wonder if they've got a Z9. Wouldn't that be cool? I thought, no, I'll not have a Z9 because you can't get Z9s for love or money. But I had a look and there was one. I stuck it in my basket, checked the availability, and here we are. So I've got a Z9. I did pay for it, but it's just, it's just a, a rental unit. But because I got it for the weekend, and the good thing about Wex Rental is that if you rent for the weekend, you only pay for one day charge. So I get it on a Friday and I get sent back on the Monday. So really useful service and I thought it's not, not too bad a price. So while I've got the Z9 for the entire weekend, why not take some landscape photographs with it? While I'm waiting for the fog to clear that side of the church, I've swung around the other side of the church because believe it or not, it's actually a little bit clear here. It's possibly because I'm actually getting a little bit closer to the church, but I still think there's a good shot to be had here. I've got the tour where it drops off down to the ground below, this, but there's still some low lying mist there, so it kind of drops off into the, into the mist, which gives me a bit of atmosphere, which is in contrast to some of the blue sky, which is up there just above the church. And I've got the sun coming in from the right here. It gives me some nice light in the foreground and on those two beautiful trees there on the right hand side, which are looking fresh and green because it's, because it's spring. It's, it's quite a pleasing scene. Got a little bit of atmosphere. And one thing I will say is that viewfinder on that Z9, it's something else, by the way. I, it's much bigger and brighter than the one on the Z7. I guess it's like uh, the Z7's like a full HD TV and that's a 4K display. It's just bigger, brighter and better. Oh, I'm, getting, I'm getting camera envy now. This is not what I planned. It's been an exciting 15 minutes or so. As you can see now behind me, the fog is just about gone. I just went just like that, as fog often does if you've ever been in it. I came back round, I was sitting about, I did another piece of the camera, and then bits and pieces of it started to clear, so I started taking some shots. And what I found was, camera on the tripod, wide angle. What was happening was you got a lot of fog that side, blue sky that, and the image just felt a little bit unbalanced, didn't feel quite right. It wasn't giving me the atmosphere that I was looking for. So I took the camera off the tripod and I started doing some vertical shots. Reason being is I don't have an L bracket for this, obviously, because it's because it's rented. And this, you can put this, uh, the head down like that, so you can put it out, but you know, it's a heavy camera and I've only got a small plate. A little bit worried about that. It's not my camera to break. So I decided to do it handheld. And then I was shooting like that for ages like I normally do. And I suddenly remembered, <laughs> it's got a built-in grip, which is great. I've never used a camera with a built-in grip before. So I've got shutter button up there. I've got my exposure and aperture dials, AF on, focus selector. The play button also is in a very handy position. In my Z7, it's up there. But the problem is if you're in a vertical orientation, getting down to the play button down there is not very, not very easy. So actually having it at the back there, near the second focus selector is actually really intuitive for both orientation. So I said, yeah, it's taking a few shots. I think I got a couple of atmospheric one, but like I said, it was quite hard to get the balance right between bits of blue sky, bits of fog. But yeah, it's been, been an exciting one. I've quite enjoyed it. But yeah, it's totally gone now. There's a few bits of cloud over there, but I think this is it. It's all burnt off. Okay, time to take a little break from the photography and talk about the Z9, or at least the technical specifications. I'm gonna quickly go over the technical specifications that are relevant to me as a landscape photographer. 
So, um, obviously, if you want to look at all the tech specs, of which there is a lot, uh, you can go to Nikon's website, for example. So, it is a pro spec body, as I said, so it's got that built in vertical grip. I'm already loving that. What else? It's got a new X Speed 7 processor, so that's probably how it does all that super high frame count that it does. A new stacked CMOS sensor, sensor as you say, sorry. 45 megapixels, 14 bit RAW files, ISO 64. That's pretty well the same, similar as the um, Z7, to be honest. It's electronic shutter only. That'll be interesting to see how I got on with the concert on Friday, uh, on Sunday night with that. Um, won't really matter to my, to my landscape photography though. It's got a sensor shield. Personally, I think this is one of the best things about this camera. I'm surprised none of the Nikons had it to start with because dust is a problem on both my Nikon ZFC, which I'm filming on just now, and the Nikon Z7 really nice to see a sensor shield in this one help hopefully keep some of the dust off 493 focus points it's got dual cf or xqd card slots brilliant one of my big bugbears about the z7 was a single card slot i know they resolved that in the z7 too but it's nice to see and it supports the newer cf type format and you've got to have one of those super fast cf cards if you want to do some of the high Video modes, I'll talk about video later though, because obviously I am a content creator, so I am interested in video. It's got a 3.69 million dot OLED EVF with high refresh rate of 120 frames a second. Like I said earlier, it's really good, really good. Not that the high refresh rate makes a particular difference to me as a landscape photographer, but I would imagine that if you're uh, into wildlife and stuff like that, or birds in flight, that's gonna be super useful, 100% coverage. It's got a multi-direction touchscreen LCD, which I have to admit, I stopped kind of using once I got the Z7. Once I went mirrorless, I always used the, the EVF, but it's nice to see. And uh, we'll point out clear text display. Now I think this came in in the Z7 II as well, but not the Z7. So you can turn off all the displays, all the information displays on the back of the screen and the EVF. So you got nice and clear, particularly useful for landscape photographers. And the really good thing is if you do have the information displays on and you rotate the camera into vertical orientation, the uh, information display goes with it. So you get a vertical slot and then you get the information at the top and the bottom. Small things make a big difference, I think. What else? Built-in GPS, happy days. No longer do I have to pair my Z7 to SnapBridge, remember to open it up, all that kind of stuff. It works fine. It also get it to sync the clock in your camera as well, so the time's always right. I know it'll be a small battery drain, but as a landscape photographer, not even having to remember to do anything, that is brilliant. I do like that. What else? Uh, oh yeah, last thing, USB-C. I can't remember whether my Z7 is USB-C because I hardly ever charge it in camera, but good to know for things like doing video, you can feed it USB power. So there are a few things there that are in the Z7, a few things there that you'll find in the Z7 too, and probably a whole lot of stuff that's new in the Z9. But that's the landscape, that's my, the specs that I'm interested in. Right, what are we gonna do next? Well, I've been up, I think my alarm went off at 3.45 this morning. Sun rises horrendously early at this time of, time of year. Uh, but I think it's been worth it this morning, so I'm gonna go ahead head home, upload some of the pictures and the video that I've been taking, have a rest, and then uh, develop a plan for later on today. So um, I'll see you then. Good evening and welcome back to Dartmoor and my Nikon Z9 landscape photography adventure. This evening's location is Great Links Tor, which is just behind me. But on the walk up, I came via a place called Brat Tor, took a couple of snapshots, nothing spectacular, but just to get me back into the, to the mood, back into the swing of things. So that was quite good. But I'm here now and I've got about a couple of hours before sunset. I was a bit 50-50 whether it's going to be a good sunset. Got some really nice cloud coming over there from behind. Sun's over in that direction but there's a big bank of low block line cloud there. It's a bit hazy up there, so might lose a light early on. No, just see. It's glorious to be up here anyway. It's a cracking evening, so I'm gonna have fun nonetheless. But while I'm waiting for sunset, it's time to tell you a bit more about the Nikon Z9.
no video about the Z9 would be complete without talking about video because this is a true hybrid camera. It's designed as much to do video as it is to do stills. And as a content creator who makes YouTube videos, who uses Nikon cameras to create those videos, I've got a real interest in the features that come with this flagship camera because some of them will eventually flow down to the cameras that I might use in the future. I'm actually shooting this particular segment on the Nikon Z9 at 8K, 25 frames a second, but I'll tell you why in a second. Let me tell you about some of the top features here. So we've got 8K at 60 frames a second or 4K at 120 frames a second, it does HLG and it does 12-bit video in NRAW and ProRes. And the amazing thing is you don't need an external recorder to do that. You just need to use the card slots in the camera. Now you do need CF cards, which means I can't actually test those features or use them because I've only got XQD cards and I wasn't going to buy a CF card just <laughs> for a weekend rental of a Z9. What else is it? It still does 10-bit and 8-bit recording. It's got subject tracking autofocus. There's a time-lapse video. I'll try and slot in some examples of that. It's got interval shooting. It's got waveforms, very handy if you're a videographer. And best of all, if you press the record button, it puts a big red box in the viewfinder on the back of the LCD screen to let you know you're actually recording. So why am I recording this in 8K, 25 frames a second? I don't have an 8K monitor. I don't have an 8K TV. I'm not even going to output it in 8K, I'll output it in 4K. What it allows me to do is that 8K frame allows me to reframe uh, a number of different shots from one angle. So from this one 8K shot, I can maybe get one, two, three different angles that will output into 4K without loss of quality. A bit like what people used to do when they were still outputting in full HD, but they were recording in 4K, just allows you to give you a bit more creativity. I think it's a really helpful thing to have. And I think if my next camera had 8K, I'd be very tempted to be looking at shooting that in 8K. I was going to talk you through my composition, but a couple of things have gone wrong for me. Well, not wrong, but just a couple of things have changed. First of all, the light has gone, and it's gone quite early, as I thought it might do this evening. I can still see the sun, still got a bit of travel yet before it goes below the horizon, but it's gone behind a hazy bank of cloud, and all the kind of soft golden light is gone. So those shots that you've just seen, those earlier shots are going to be the best that I've got. I don't know what they look like, so they might actually be okay. And the other reason I can't talk you through the shot is because some wild campers have turned up and put tents uh, in the middle of my composition, so I'm unable to, to talk you through it with a, a tent in the way. So, But not to worry, not too bad. Hopefully you got an idea of what the scene was like um, through the pictures. You know, it's a very typical Dartmoor scene, just looking for light, shape, textures, the light on the grasses. Um, so hopefully I've done a, a reasonable job of that. It's more like I say, it's my first time up here, so uh, it's good to have a, a little explore with it with the camera. That's the on-location bit finished of this video, but don't rush off yet. A couple of things I want to do back home. First of all, I want to tell you what I thought of the Z9, some of the things um, that I would like to see in a potential, so like a Z8, what trickle-down features I might want to see, and I'm hopefully going to show you some of the other pictures that I've been capturing with this camera this weekend so potentially some shots from a dog and potentially some live music shots as well we'll have to see how those go so do join me back home where it's going to be a little bit warmer i'll see you in a minute hello and welcome back well i'm sorry to say that the z9 has now been return to Wix. A little bit sad to see it go, I did thoroughly enjoy using this camera. But for the remainder of the video, I'm going to talk about whether I'd actually buy a Z9 and what technologies and features and specifications that I saw in the Z9 that I'd like to see flow down into future Z models. So the question is, would I buy a Z9? And the answer is, probably not. Now, it's not to say that the Z9 isn't a great camera for taking landscape photographs. It is, it does pretty well everything you need it, or everything I need it to do to capture landscape photographs. But the problem is, 
you're paying a premium for a bunch of features that as a landscape photographer, you're never gonna use. So all that advanced subject tracking, autofocus, high frame rate counts, mostly irrelevant for me, at least anyway, as a landscape photographer. I can imagine though, if you're a wildlife photographer or a sports photographer, these features are gonna be killer. This, the camera is amazing. The, the focus tracking on it, the high frame rate count, all those things, even if you're a videographer and you're making films, you know, being able to shoot at 8K, there's so much tech in that camera to make it worth the money. But for me, as a landscape photographer, I'd just be paying the premium for a bunch of features that I'd never use. So I think if I, I would definitely consider renting one again. I mean, if I had the, the need for a camera like that doing another concert or gig, I'd probably just rent one. But there's no way I'd spend 5,300 pounds on a camera with a bunch of features that I'm probably never gonna use. I mean, spending 5,300 pounds just to take good pictures of your dog is a little bit excessive. However, if I did win the lottery, I probably would buy one. While I wouldn't buy a Z9, there is a lot of interest in tech and specifications and features in that camera that I'd like to see flow down to future Nikon Z models, perhaps like a Z8. Let me cover off some of, some of the features that caught my eye. That center shield, I think all mirrorless cameras should have a center shield to stop dust getting in there when you're changing lenses. Dust is a problem with both my Nikon Z FC and my um, Nikon Z7. It's worse than the ZFC because you're doing video and it's a little bit harder to clean up. Dust spots, dual card slots as well. I think any prospect camera needs to have dual card slots and ideally they should be both the same type. So I don't want to see uh, an XQD slash CF slot combined with an SD card slot. I'd rather have two the same. So I'd like to have, as it is in the Z9, dual CF, dual XQD. That would be great. Built-in GPS as well. For me, absolute killer feature. I really enjoyed that. Stop having to remember to pair it with my phone when it pairs, it's always a bit problematic. So that built-in GPS was great. That different flippy screen as well, I really like that as well, the way you can angle it out. Currently the one on the Z7, you can only angle towards you. I shoot a lot of vertical landscapes. So having that ability to flip it vertically is really good. Apologies, I'm, I'm reading off my notes because I, I tend to forget these things. 8K video, yeah, I'm not a cinematographer, but as I hopefully had sort of demonstrated in the in the clip previously, being able to shoot 8K allowed me to do multiple crops from the same shooting angle down into to 4K. I think I find that quite useful. Uh, what else have we got? I would like to see, oh, I'd like to see the same battery. So that that's, Nikon Z9 comes with a big battery and that's for good reason because you're gonna be burning through a lot of shots. It's a big high capacity ba battery. Ideally, I'd like to see it use the same battery as the Z7, um, you know, but that, that's gonna depend because I've got a bunch of those batteries, those um, Z7 batteries. So ideally, but that's more of a, 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 a nice to have. I would really like to see that 10 port terminal that they've got uh, in the Z9 that you, they had there also in the, the Nikon D850 because I do miss using my cable release. What else? Oh, and it could do with just being a little bit smaller. So I'd like to see it kind of Nikon Z7 size, but not as big as the Nikon Z9. And the Z9 is heavy and it's big and I understand why it's big and heavy and it feels good in the hand, but it doesn't even fit my bag. Now that's because my bags are designed for mirrorless cameras and that's bigger than your average mirrorless camera. So I would like it to be, some of that tech to be crammed down into a smaller package, which probably means that there's you know, no vertical grip, but I'm not bothered about that, and probably a smaller battery size. But I don't have problems with the capacity of the Nikon Z7 battery. So I think that would be fine. I'd be quite happy with that capacity. So they're the kind of things that I would like to see flow down. Nice to have would be some of the, the focus tracking stuff, because you know I do use my camera to take pictures of my dogs, but it wouldn't stop me buying the camera if it didn't have some of those advanced um, uh, tracking features. I think it's very similar to when I think um, the D6 or the D5 came out and then the D850 came out later on. It was just like a mini version of that camera. So that's what I'd like to see with the Z9 flowing down into the Z8. Um, we, can, uh, we can keep our fingers crossed. One final thing. When I said in the video why I got the Z9 was to do some, uh, shoot a special concert that I was gonna uh, go to on Sunday. You may have noticed that I actually haven't spoken much about it or shared any of the pictures from that. That's because in true concert photography style, there was a bit of a, 
a mismatch in communications between uh, some various people involved in issuing out of photo passes. Now, I did get my photo pass, but I was prevented from um, shooting from where I would expect to normally capture photographs. So I wasn't really able to capture the images that I was uh, hoping to get, which is really disappointing. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, I rented it, I spent money to, to get this camera for that, but that was my, my risk. And I always knew that this was a possibility. And it does happen every now and again. You can have everything in place and then the rug can be pulled from you, uh, uh, from, pulled from under your feet at the very last second as it was on Sunday. So a bit disappointing. Now I did take shots because I had to take shots for the publication that I was um, uh, shooting for, uh, but they're quite far away shots. So they're, they're not the shots that I, I ultimately w wanted to get, which you get when you're up at the pit. So I can't really talk about how the camera performed directly in the, in the situation that I got it for, but I will make a couple of points. The AF tracking, even from distance with a long lens in a kind of darkish environment, which concerts are, was phenomenal. It, it was picking out faces. I could use the select and I could move between uh, faces. Really, really bang on the money there with, with the folks. And then the other thing I noticed as well, even though the shots uh, well, maybe shot probably about ISO 1200, 1600, something like that, uh, at f2.8. They came out super clean. I mean, the clarity and the detail, even at those, well, they're not really high ISOs anymore, but even by cropping in to give myself a bit more reach, I found the image quality was superb and the focus really nailed it. So I think that camera... If I'd, if I'd just been where I wanted to be, I could have really shone with that camera and got some stunning images. But from my ex limited experience from where I was shooting, yeah, it was it was doing the job and I would definitely hire one again. Right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my uh, little video about the Z9. It was really good using it for the weekend. I had a thoroughly good time. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about the Z9. Have you got one? Tell me what you use it for. Are you planning to get one? Would you only get one if you won the lottery. Let me know kind of some of the features that you saw on the Z9 that you'd also like to see sort of flow down to a potential Nikon Z8. But if you have got an extra few minutes, I'm popping up a couple of videos or playlists in the corner of the screen. But if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And yeah, leave me a comment. Tell me about the Z, what your thoughts are about the Z9. I really do honestly enjoy reading your comments and I do try and reply to each and every one of them. Uh, and yeah, and subscribe as well if you'd like to see more content from myself. But other than that, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.